Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the shit show. Hello, Minder. Hello. So we were just laughing our asses off. One of the first ones we ever did together at the end of the show, I was like, what the hell is anonymous koala? And it was it was um, the little little icon next to the name in our Google Doc that we were working off of. And instead of it showing her name where it would show my name on her end, it showed her as anonymous koala. And when she would go to type something, it would say like anonymous koala is typing. And it was so stupid and funny. Well, I just looked today and today she's no longer a koala. She's a fucking dingo. So we have upgraded from anonymous koala to anonymous dingo who ate your baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fucking hell. Okay. So Amanda. We have upgraded our AI story experience. Are you excited about this? I'm very excited. Yeah, this one's way funnier, way easier to like make relevant to the episodes. We're going to try mm-hmm. to make the AI story and the Mad Lib like as relevant as possible to what we're talking about so that it just kind of has a through line because before it's just kind of been all over the place because that again, not fucking professionals deal with it. <laughs> so Amanda's going to kick it off with the AI story, and I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to read out the Mad Lib. So hit it, lady. Okay, so the keywords for this story are Amanda, Nikki, food, gross, crunchy, sensory. Uh, the, so here's the prompt. I'm hungry, Amanda said. What are we eating for dinner? <clears throat> How about fried chicken, Nikki said. Let's go to your favorite chicken place, Amanda. I've already talked about it. Come on. I don't like fried chicken, Amanda said. I'm just going to have to pretend I do. She laughed. How about if I'm the designated driver for dinner? That might work for you, Nikki said. When Amanda pulled into the drive thru at Nikki's favorite chicken place, wait, I thought it was my favorite chicken place, whatever, she saw Nikki waving her through the parking lot. Don't let me keep you from dinner, Amanda said. I'll eat my chicken, but I'm not eating anything else, Nikki said. Come on, stop being such a smart ass. That tracks. Why are you being so harsh with me, Amanda said, sitting in her car while eating her chicken? I'm your girlfriend. <laughs> Do you really think I want to be mean to you, Nikki said? I wouldn't say you're being cruel to me, Amanda said. I wouldn't say you're being cruel. I think you've had a lot on your plate lately. You seem kind of down, and I'm worried that you're upset with me. Don't be mad at me, Amanda. Wait, I just want you to be happy. Amanda, Nikki said, I don't want to be your girlfriend. Amanda began to drive away. But I love you, Amanda said. I love you too, Nikki said as she slid her seat back and closed her eyes. But I'm not in love with you, Amanda. But I'm in love with Nikki, Amanda said. And I'm in love with Jessica. And I'm in love with Anna. And I'm in love with you. I'm in love with all of you. Amanda shook her shook her head. Don't do that, she said. I can't help it, Nikki said. I can't let my myself feel things. I'm an empath. <laughs> Amanda sighed. Nikki, you're in love with everyone. I know, Nikki said. What do you mean you're in love with all of us? Amanda said. <laughs> Am- I'm sorry, Nikki, Amanda said. You're right. I should have known that you couldn't keep up with me. I'm in love with the actual problems. <laughs> I'll try not to be jealous, Nikki said. I know that you love me and that you love Jessica, Amanda said, but I just don't know how to be in love with everyone at the same time. Yeah, I've got plenty of issues, Nikki said. What about your bad eating habits? Do you want to try to lose some weight, Amanda said. I haven't had anything more than a salad for lunch all week, Nikki said. That's not healthy, Amanda said. I should never have stopped feeding you food, Nikki. (laughs) Have a piece of fried chicken and a bowl of pasta. (laughs) I just wish they didn't love everything I do. I've got such a good life. It makes me so happy that you love me, too. I really just wish I could eat chicken once in a while, Nikki said. I'm eating it for you right now, Amanda said. That's not the point, Nikki said. Is it the taste? Is that why you can't? Amanda said. No, it's not the taste, Nikki said. I just love everything about chicken. I can't eat it because it's going to make me feel gross. But I can eat whatever else. You're disgusting, Amanda said. That's not true, Nikki said. Nikki opened her eyes. Amanda, she said. I'm sorry, I'm just grossed out. You're grossed out about me being in love with you, and you're grossed out about me eating chicken? Amanda said. Yes, Nikki said. That's grosser than being grossed out about you being in love with all of us. The end. 
Okay, so what I love is that so much of this fucking checks out for us. The fact that it's a, it mentioned Jessica, it's like, I do have a good friend named Jessica, so I thought that was funny. Yeah, and the fact that I just recorded with Jess Lance, like, not that long ago, like, I didn't use, the, they just threw that name in there. Like, I did not, I did not do that. And the stop being such a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, why are you being so harsh with me? I just love how it kept changing. It's like, it kept saying, like, uh, yeah. it kept changing perspective. It's like, first, uh, like Amanda, it said Amanda said this, but then it's like, but Nikki said this at the same time about right. it. it. It couldn't get it straight who it was talking it, about. It's funny. I can't help it. I can't let myself feel things. That's that's me, one hundred percent. I can't let myself feel things. I'm an empath. I'm the one with the actual problems. I should have never stopped feeding you food. <laughs> like you're my dog. And the fact that you said you should have never stopped feeding me food, and then you offer me. A bowl of uh, fried chicken and a bowl of pasta is like perfect because, like, of course, mm-hmm. you know, I love my noodles. So mm-hmm. it's like, yes, ma'am. So, okay, that one was much funnier than usual. And I like that it included our names um, and that it actually used them because on the last AI thing I was using, I would give it like keywords to use, but it wouldn't actually put them in the story. And this one, mm-hmm. like, a lot of it made much more sense, even though it was funny. It like, made a little bit more funny sense other than it not remembering mm-hmm. who's what. so All right that was funny i like it okay so our mad lib for today um on theme is the confessions of a pizza eater which amanda is a pizza eater so yes pizza eater amanda i need a nationality please zimbabwean Oh, Jesus. Okay. Celebrity. Robert Downey Jr. Type of material. Satin. Adjective. Uh, androgynous. This is going to be so fucking funny. <laughs> I can already tell. I, can, I try to think of funny words. Type of what? Liquid. Tequila. Can't even smell that shit anymore. <laughs> Not vomiting. Okay, plural noun. Poodles. Poodles. I love poodles. Type of food. Pierogies. Okay. Noun. Uh, two thousand three Toyota Camry. I used to drive. <laughs> That's probably why I thought of it. I was like, I don't know why I'm thinking of a 2003. That's literally the same year that I had. <laughs> Verb. Frighten. Adjective. Anonymous. Anonymous. Dingo today. <laughs> what animal will be will I be next time? Tune in. Um, adjective. Patty Wampus. Oh. We got some good ones today, guys. Fan- type of fancy food. Escargo. Ooh. I would ne- yeah. I, I, I can't be rich. I could never eat that. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, and then lastly, a number. 6,195. All right. Here we go. This is the confessions of a pizza eater. The pizza was invented by a famous Zimbabwean chef named Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Make is that his Tropic Thunder character? Tropic Thunder character. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. To make a pizza, you take a lump of satin and make a thin, round, androgynous pancake. <laughs> they were gendering those. No gendering the pancakes. Not allowed. Then you cover it with tomato tequila, Parmesan <laughs> poodles, and pizza of pierogies. <laughs> Parmesan poodles and pieces of pierogies is quite the fucking word. Like word, what am I trying to say? Like so many peas in that in that sentence. It's alliterative. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Next, you bake it in a very hot 2003 Toyota <laughs> Then you frighten it and slice it into wedges. Some people like anonymous pizzas best. 
My favorite is the cattywampus pizza. <laughs> My mother says that pizza is junk food, but I think it's better than escargot. If I could, I would eat pizza 6,195 times a day. The end. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So we have androgynous pancakes, which might be in the fucking title. I think it, that's making it in the title. Parmesan poodles and pieces of pierogies. I'm digging it. Like, we're going to have to put androgynous pancakes in the fucking title. It's making it into the title. I think that's my favorite, favorite thing we've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> androgynous pancakes, Parmesan poodles, and pieces of pierogies. That's what we're just, I'm not even going to tell you what we're talking about. If you can't figure out what we're talking about from the title, you're just going to have to tune in and listen because <laughs> that should give you everything you need to know about <laughs> this fucking show. Okay. Oh, that's funny shit. Okay. So if you haven't figured it out, we're, we're talking about food today and the issues that come up with um, food and neurodiversity. But I'm going to let you go first since I just did some talking with the Mad Lib. Let's start with sensory issues that you have with foods. Well, I've touched on it a little bit before. I'm a big, like, I'm based on texture, texture eating. Um, so probably like 99% of the time, if I don't like a food, it's because of texture. It's not flavor. Like, I, like all growing up as a kid, I've been called picky. Like, even as an adult, called picky. And I just accepted it. Like, well, yeah, I just, I'm, I guess I'm just picky. So, there, yeah, there's definitely, like, certain foods that I just can't, can't do. Probably, like, a main one that, like, like, it's cooked vegetables. Like, I will eat raw vegetables. Salad, fine. You know, like, I'll, 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 I'll eat an entire bag of raw carrots, no problem. But as soon as you cook those damn carrots, it just becomes a problem. Like, stir fry. Is probably like one of my least favorite types of food because it's just everything I hate about that texture. And it's a problem with like cooked vegetables because obviously that's in a lot of food, like in a lot of dishes. And it just makes it seem like, oh, she just doesn't like vegetables. She only likes like kids' food or junk food. It's like, no, if you just not cook the vegetables, I'll eat them. But unfortunately, that's just not how society works. Like, I remember. It was last year sometime, went to a buffet with friends, and I bit into, it was labeled like a pork, it was like a Chinese buffet, I bit into like a pork dumpling. I was like, okay, I like pork, I like dumplings, so I bite into it, and then there's like bits of food I wasn't expecting to be, I think it was like probably vegetables, probably something, but there was just bits of it, and so I immediately just had to spit it out, like, I just got my napkin and just kind of like, you know, did a whole covert thing of putting it in my napkins it's like I I just can't like it doesn't want to make me throw up or anything just it's I just like I can't just get it on my mouth I can't do it anymore that sort of thing like mushrooms feel very slimy to me and I just can't like I like cream of mushroom soup like I'll use it for making things cream mushroom soup no problem but don't like it in my food in terms of like say pizza for the method we just did like I'm just cheese or pepperoni, like pepperoni or salami. That's that's it. Like, I don't even want like sausage on it because like sausage has a weird texture for me. And so, pepperoni, salami. That's pretty much it. Do not put a single vegetable on my on my pizza. Like, I will, I will not. I will be that child that is picking up every single thing off the pizza to eat it. Yeah, that's pretty much like like I said, just just been grown up being called picky. And even now, like, even my mom will call me picky. And she's like, well, you eat this? I know how picky you are. And so that's pretty I think much that's a good, experience. like, way to start the conversation about what it feels like when someone is mischaracterizing you as picky when it's literally something that you can't help. Like you said, you like vegetables. If you could handle the texture of cooked vegetables, you would eat them, but your body physically can't and brain like physically cannot accept the texture of a cooked vegetable. It's like I would like I would love to be able to eat whatever food. Right. right? Like I, it's like I, it's like I hate being quote unquote picky. 
Like right. whenever people are like, oh, I love eating this type of food and this type of food. It's like, I want to eat that type of food. I don't want to be missing out on certain foods. It's just, especially like uh, Japanese food, Chinese food, like a lot of those, I just can't. But I will, I love like the spices. I love the flavors. And so, but it's just a lot of textures in those foods. I can't. And it's like, I would love to be able to eat that food. I feel like the consensus is that word picky, right? Like people think, oh, she's a full grown adult. So it's not that she can't, she just doesn't want to, or she won't. Mm -hmm. They think you should grow out of being a quote unquote picky eater by the time you become an adult. And like, it's a choice. It's not something that you can't help because you're an adult. And if you wanted to eat a cooked carrot, you, you could, but you don't want to. So you're not going to. I don't know how it was, how it was in your house with like food growing up, but for me, you ate what was put in front of you when you were little, especially, right? Or you were shit out of luck. You ate what was cooked for dinner and that was it. There was no like two ways about it. And I remember when it was one night, my, when my mom was married to Andy's dad, he loved Salisbury steaks, like the gross no meat patty things and brown gravy like things that makes me think of McRib and McRibs are uh, disgusting yes so he would make that and craft mac and cheese and mashed potatoes and corn and that would be dinner okay down with the mashed potatoes and corn down with the mac and cheese but I hated Salisbury steak so like on those nights when he made Salisbury steak I just didn't eat a protein that night Like I literally just ate the corn and the mac and cheese and the potatoes and called it a day because I physically could not bring myself to eat them. I like brown gravy on things like I could get past the fact that it was like covered in gravy. That wasn't the problem. The problem was that when you take a bite of those mystery meat fucking patties, it's like the weirdest fucking texture in the world in your mouth. And then you can't get past the fucking texture long enough to even accept the fact that it tastes like something let alone leave it in your mouth long enough to figure out if you like how it tastes Mm -hmm. we haven't even approached taste it like doesn't even come into the fucking picture it's just the second that thing hits your mouth and you feel something that feels wrong it's like you're instantaneously your brain is just like nope that's not food and out it comes i don't even have a choice in the matter do you like do you do you feel like you have a choice of whether or not to just like swallow it and deal with it or is it just like a reflex for you where you just like spit it out well it kind of depends it's for me like say i'm eating a hamburger all of a sudden i bite into like a hard piece of hamburger like say gristle whatever mm-hmm. and i can't finish the hamburger because god forbid i find another piece of that in the hamburger so i just won't finish the hamburger there are other times where say like i'm at dinner with like with scott and them and they they love all sorts of food over there I'm pretty sure, like, some of them, like, a couple of them have, like, some sensory issues, but they just love cooking. They just, they, basically, I always feel like when people kind of cook that sort of stuff, I'm like, are they just more adult than I am? Like, are they just, because they can eat all this stuff, and here I am with my, my bowl of cereal or whatever, and, but anyway, like, they made, <clears throat> I forgot what, he, he made some sort of soup or a stew. And stews, like I love soup more than stew. Stews tend to have all these cooked vegetables in it. So he made some sort of soup or stew, and he was like, and Scott has become more aware of like what stuff I can handle. But obviously, I'm not gonna like force all of them to follow what I can eat at all times because that wouldn't be very conducive for anything. So he made like a soup or like a super stew um, that had like. It was like onions, I think like chunks of like tomatoes, chunks of tomatoes, no. Mm. And then just a bunch of just random vegetables or whatever. And like the beef, it was like beef, 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 vegetable stew. And I would like try, I would try eating around it. But if I ended up getting it in my mouth, I would just kind of like literally pause and just swallow it. Just so, because I'm like, I can't just keep spitting stew out <laughs> in front of everybody. So I just kind of like pause. And literally just have to like mentally prepare myself to swallow it. And it just, it can be a lot sometimes with certain things, but, but yeah, like, like I said, with that, when I went to that one buffet, I just kind of like, just took my napkin and just kind of like spit it out. Like it's not an immediate thing. Like I can keep it out, but I kind of just kind of like work my way around it. And then just kind of like, okay, I, this needs to come out now. I can't do it. It's not like immediate gagging, but. 
yeah. So my mine is is strange because I don't have an issue with foods being like too soft all the time or like too crunchy. Like I prefer crunchy foods, like prefer that kind of like right now. I'm eating saltine crackers in between <laughs> breaks of us talking because like I just needed something salty and crunchy. But my thing that gets me the worst is like, like the hamburger thing. Like if you're eating something and you expect it to be a certain texture, but you take a bite and find something that is the opposite of the texture you were expecting. Like I freak out, like I can't handle it. But like slimy things for me, like I can't do bananas because for whatever reason, bananas feel slimy when I bite into them. Like, you know how Dairy Queen had the, like, the the fried little mushroom things? Like, yeah. I feel like a few of our friends loved those. And I swear to God, like, I could never even watch someone eat those because I remember someone breaking one open in front of me before to, like, let it cool. And you could see that it was, like, crust with slimy shit in the middle of it. Like, that would freak me the fuck out. Like, there's no way that I could eat something like that because I'm expecting to take a bite of it. And I know that there will be something soft in there, but I can't handle slimy, like at all. I can't, cannot do it. I don't even like touching slimy things. Right. So like having a something slimy in my mouth, no thank you. Right. And other than that, like, like I said, I don't feel like I have as many sensory problems with food. But for me... I get into food hyperfixations. And I think I might have mentioned this before, like on the show, but I, for the longest time, would only eat, like when I first started going back to work, the only thing I wanted to eat, the only thing that I could even contemplate putting in my mouth, everything else sounded disgusting, was the specific brand of macaroni and cheese and the specific brand of chicken nugget. Like, that's it. That's all I would eat. I ate that for probably two meals a day, probably four-ish weeks in a row. And after that, I didn't touch it again for like six months. Mm -hmm. Like it was my favorite thing. I ate it all the time. And then one day I went to look at it and the thought of even touching the box to pick the box up and make that food, I was like, fuck it, I'd rather starve. Like, do you ever get like that? I think my major thing, like my major food with that, probably like the, like the one I do that the most with is probably eggs. Like I will, like right now I have a, like I, I was just at your house and ate eggs. Like, and then there'll be a time where it's like, oh, just, I like eggs, but I won't eat it like every day, but I'll eat it for a while. But then just then the thought of buying eggs, like, God forbid, no, don't make me do that. Like, I don't want eggs anymore. <clears throat> but yeah, like I'll buy a bag of, like the family size bag of pierogies, eat that for an entire week, and then not buy another bag of pierogies for like three months. And that, yeah, but I definitely get that way. Um, I had like two full weeks where the only thing I had for dinner was pancakes. Like I bought a box of just like the pancake mix that all you do is mix with water, not even like the pancake batter stuff. All you do is just mix with water. And I probably ate that every night for dinner for two weeks. I, because I was running out, I bought another box and then I, I have, I still have a half eaten box of pancake mix and I, I have not eaten in probably six to eight months. Cause it's like, can't even imagine eating pancakes now. <laughs> Cause I just did it for two weeks. Yeah. And like, I get like that and I have, it, it like, they come on, like these fixations come on with like zero warning and mm -hmm. then they leave with zero warning. So it's like, it makes it difficult for me to grocery shop and to meal plan. And like, I'm not just one person. I have a husband and two kids. And so that also complicates food and meal times because none of us are fixated on the same food at the same time. None of us, very rarely do I make a meal where every one of us will eat that meal. And it's not even sometimes if it's something that I know the kids like, right? Like we were doing tacos one night and when Noah is in the mood for tacos, he will eat like three or four of them in one sitting. 
But if he is on a hyperfixation with chicken nuggets or burgers, he will not fucking touch anything else. It used to irritate me until I realized, like, I do the same fucking thing. Like, I can't get mad at him for physically not being able to put a bite of taco in his mouth because his brain only wants chicken nuggets. And have you also ever done that thing where, like, you really want something, but you, like, don't, you already made this food, so you, like, try to force yourself to eat what you cooked, and you'll eat it, but you, like, didn't really taste it, and you're still hungry because it wasn't the thing that you really wanted to eat. You just ate something to eat. Do you ever have that happen, too? Yeah, especially, like, if I take something to work to eat, it's, like, it's, like, because I was, like, oh, I'll make something for dinner, and it's, like, oh, I have leftovers. I'll eat it at work. And then I get to work and it's like, I really don't want this, but I don't have anything else and I don't want to go out and get something. Right. So I just have to eat it. Yeah. But then it fucks my mood all up because I'm like, yep, pissed off that I had to eat this food I didn't want to fucking eat. It's like, I don't know. It's so it's it it rules my life more than I would like it to. And Mm -hmm. like the work thing is a perfect example. Like I will bring a lunch to work and then by the time it comes to eat that lunch, I don't fucking want it. And then I'm either leaving to go get food and spending money I didn't need to spend when I brought a lunch or I'm pissed off because I forced myself to eat that anyway. So it's like it's it's a lose lose situation. I'm either out of money and happy (laughs) that I ate what I wanted (laughs) to eat or I am pissed off and left with more money it's like you know what i mean like it's like which Mm -hmm. which fucking end of the shit show do you want today like do you want to just spend the ten dollars for a fucking sandwich that is stupid that you paid ten dollars for you could have fucking made at home because you don't want the macaroni and cheese that you brought or do you eat the macaroni and cheese in misery and like eat something you want later it's so hard to do like it's so hard to do and then there are there are days when i can bring myself to eat the thing, even though I really don't want to. And then there are days when I will literally like try to force myself to do it. And the thought of taking a bite of that food, even if I like the food will make me want to physically throw up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were talking about like having how hard it is to grocery shop. And yeah, I I also obviously can imagine it's really hard for like a family of four. Like, yeah, because even for me, like I used to grocery shop for like two weeks worth of food at a time. But then I got to the point where I was throwing, having to throw a lot of food away because I would grocery shop. It's like, oh, well, this sounds good. This sounds good. And then like a week later, it's like, you know, I can't even imagine touching that food. And so now, luckily, I work right across the street from a grocery store. And so what I do is I just grab a bag, like a reusable bag, like uh, like twice a week on my lunch, I will go to the grocery store and buy three to four days worth of food that I know like that way I'm not wasting as much because that way I can just get what I'm currently fixated on right now or just like staples like bread stuff like that and just buy that instead of buying two weeks worth of food that maybe in a week's time I don't want to touch for six months and then it goes bad right so yeah we we struggle a lot with food waste in our house for that reason especially with produce because Like, I'll go to the store and maybe today I'll want apples. But by the time I get home, I won't touch the apples. Like, ever. Do you know what I mean? And then some weeks, I will buy the bag of apples and they're gone in two days. Same thing with grapes. Like, I bought cotton candy grapes, which are not cheap, before you got here that weekend. And you and I ate that one plate of cotton candy grapes. And I have not fucking touched the bag of grapes since. And they're probably bad now. Jordan hates wasting money and he hates wasting food. And I was raised in a household where you did not fucking waste food. Like you might as well have slapped your mom across the face if you didn't finish your plate, right? Like you just didn't waste food. And so it's like ingrained in me that if I bought it, I need to use it or was for a long time. And then I like shifted the pendulum and I'm like, you know what? If I didn't fucking want to eat it and it goes bad, it goes bad but it still sucks because you've wasted fucking money and you've wasted food. And I feel bad because I wasted money and the fucking food. Like, I think the thing I really wanted to highlight is like, our brains aren't fucking choosing this. Like, this is not a choice. I'm not actively choosing to waste $13 on chicken 
that I purchased to cook and then never cooked. No one wants to waste money right now. That's not a thing. We're not fucking rolling in it. And even if I was, I don't want to waste food, right? Like I understand what a privilege it is to buy a package of chicken, not want to eat the chicken and then throw the chicken in the garbage because it went bad. Food is harder than it should be for people who are neurodivergent and people who are not neurodivergent. Like I'm fucking jealous because you could just eat the food you buy for an entire week and meal plan and have your life together and not waste chicken because you decided you wanted chicken the day you went shopping. And then two days later, now you don't want to cook the chicken. It's like, yeah, when people, like I said, like I said earlier, when people can just eat food and not have to think about it, it's like, what do you, I just want to be like, what do you mean you can basically function as an adult? What is, what is this witchcraft of that you can do? Like I told you a few weeks ago, I had bought a jar of pasta sauce, which I thought was just regular marinara pureed sauce. And I find out I had chunks of tomatoes. So I'm literally sitting over my stove, straining the pasta sauce to get rid of the chunks of tomatoes so I could eat my fucking pasta that I wanted. It sucks. So yeah, like when people, I think when people say like, oh, she's just a picky eater, it's like insinuating that I'm choosing or you're choosing to be difficult and to be picky. Like who the fuck chooses to strain their fucking pasta sauce after they've worked for eight plus hours, exhausted with people all day, when they could just dump it on the fucking noodles and move on, right? Like, nobody chooses that shit. Nobody chooses to have a physical reaction to a food being <clears throat> in their mouth or on their plate that they physically, that they know they physically cannot consume. Like, nobody chooses this shit. Right. Like, I even saw... I think it was like a TikTok or a reel or something. It was this dad, he showed he showed like a brand of bread. And what was the other thing? I think a brand of peanut butter. And he go and he goes, he's like, My son is an adult now. But if I if we did not have this brand of bread and this brand of peanut butter, he would not be alive because this was for twenty years, this was the only thing he would eat. He he said, and then, of course, all the comments are like, well, you should have made him eat more of this. You should have had him do this. And it's like, you're going to force a child, like, who's probably crying. And it's like, not, like, not doing this to be a difficult child. And, like, forcing them to try to eat something. Like, yes, like, I understand, like, children have to, should eat, like, vegetables, children should eat whatever, you know, healthy, whatever. Just give them a fucking vitamin for that at that point. A lot of the comments just did not understand. Like, I wasn't that kind of kid. Like, I didn't eat peanut butter sandwiches all the time. Like, I, but there were times when, especially like before my parents were divorced, my dad was meat potatoes kind of guy, two vegetables for every meal. So here I was. I just, I have like a very vivid memory of me, I think like six or seven, of me just sitting at the dining room table, like until, and like my parents were not at the table because they're like, you're not leaving until you finish your plate. Like, not saying they're abusive or anything. Like, they just obviously didn't understand. Like, that's just how they were raised. You know, you just, you finish your plate. There are starving kids in Africa. So, God forbid you waste this food. So, I just remember sitting, like, and they're like, and I, but I'm like, but they're cooked vegetables, so I can't eat them. And But they're like, you also can't leave the table without eating them. So. Yeah, we had that too. Like, I remember a time when my mom had us babysat by my Aunt Marianne, who is my grandpa's sister. So, she was like our great aunt. And she liked to make these strange combinations of food. And I don't even know what kind of sauce this was, but she would make mashed potatoes with cut up hot dogs and some sort of like tomato soupy sauce. And that's what we would have to eat. And if she put it on our plate, we could not get up from the table until we finished it. And my Aunt Marianne wasn't, again, she wasn't trying to be, like, abusive or whatever. It's just how she was raised. So, like, if whatever they were given, they ate because they were raised poor. Like, they had no money. And their mother would make clothes out of potato sacks for them. Like, that was a real thing. So, that's where that mentality of, like, you do not waste food came from. Is, like, their upbringing that was passed down to my mom and then to me. And, like, my mom was way less strict about it. But we were with my grandparents a lot or my great aunts a lot because that's, because my mom was a single mom and that's who we would be with. So 
And my grandmother was always better about things like she wouldn't generally wouldn't make something that nobody would eat. She would try to have at least one thing on the table that we liked so she knew we would eat something. But I think she kind of knew without really saying anything that it wasn't a choice for us. So I do appreciate that she like tried to have at least something during the meal that she knew we would eat. And if we want to jump off that topic for a minute, do you feel like you had any, I mean, you kind of touched on the whole thing, like finish your plate. Like, do you feel like you've ever really struggled with any kind of disordered eating? Not necessarily like full on bulimia or anorexia or anything like that, but just like some level of disordered eating or like weight issues or like body image problems because of the way that food was talked about in your home. So like, as, as you know, like I got up to 300 pounds at one point, like granted that might not be completely attributed to sensory issues just because I just ate junk because junk, like a lot of junk food is, has the texture that I like. I just remember like, even when like, let's say Mark lived with me, he wanted, when we went to the store, he wanted, he loves shrimp. He wanted like this thing of shrimp. It was almost like kind of like laid out in like a cocktail type of way. We bought that. He ate maybe like a fourth of it and then just decided he didn't and decided he didn't want it anymore. And at the time, I didn't understand it because I didn't know how I was as a person. And Mark has ADHD, he's been diagnosed with ADHD since we were kids. And so he's like, he's like, but I don't want it anymore. And so I remember getting, and he wanted to throw it away. And I remember getting mad at him. Like, don't you dare throw that away. We paid a lot of money for this, for this shrimp that you wanted. I said, you better not throw it away. We ended up having to throw away because he just could not eat it. And I just didn't understand it at the time. But I think it has given me to the point where I feel guilty if I don't finish something. I'll have something in my pantry or my fridge. It's like, well, I have to continue eating it. Otherwise, I have to throw it away and it's wasteful. And then I feel guilty because then I just feel, like I said, feel, I feel all for all the starving kids in Africa. They don't have a choice. Like they could be all these kids in Africa are like, you know, neurodivergent and they are, can't make a choice of what they eat. <laughs> this might be another episode, but I have a lot of guilt for no reason for things I can't control, like just in general. Oh, that is so definitely that- another episode. <laughs> yes. Um, but- <laughs> yes. I heard that a lot too growing up. Like there are starving kids in Africa and they wouldn't be picky about what they were given or they would finish their plate if it was put in front of them or whatever, right? And that's why we don't waste food because they're starving children in Africa. And like, we heard that a lot. And that's that's true. There's starving children actually all over the world. But like, mm-hmm. that was the big thing that we heard a lot in our house. And I'm I'm sad to say that like, I did sort of, push that on my kids when they were younger. And I would get frustrated because I was raised that way. And my kids, before I really knew everything that was going on with them and way before I I ever knew what was going on with me, I would make a meal and everybody else's Pinterest life and Facebook life, all these other moms could get their kids to eat vegetables but my kids wouldn't touch them, specifically Nicholas. Noah actually likes quite a few vegetables, but he's like you. He will not fucking eat a cooked vegetable to save his life. You could pay that kid, say, you could tell him, I will give you whatever you want in the Target toy aisle if you eat one piece of broccoli and he'd tell you to fuck off. Like, he just won't. He won't do it. And same thing with Nicholas. But Noah really likes raw vegetables. And I think it's the, the crunch, the texture. Like he loves cucumbers. He'll he'll eat that all the time. He loves bell peppers. But like Nicholas won't touch a vegetable fucking period. Like period. Not raw, not cooked. It don't fucking matter. Do not give him a vegetable unless it's lettuce on a burger or something. I would feel guilty that I couldn't get my kids to eat healthy foods. All they wanted was quote unquote junk foods. So I don't know. It that's been a whole like revolution in our house. It's like me going from like feeling like it's my fault and there's something wrong with me that my kid won't eat this food that I've cooked for him or even or the fact that he liked it last week but doesn't like it now and I would struggle with that and then coming to find out later on that oh that's a huge part of being neurodivergent and a huge part 
of both of my kids' lives because they're both neurodivergent. And then coming to my own analysis, which like, again, I said, I, I don't struggle as much with food textures and things. I have a lot of preferences in the hyperfixation, but like my kids have massive texture issues, massive texture issues, both of them. And I had to learn like, this is not their fucking choice. And that whole thing of, oh, if they're really hungry, they'll eat. No, they fucking won't. They, they can't force themselves to eat something that their brain doesn't want them to eat. It's just not going to happen. And they would, they would rather fucking starve than eat it. Mm -hmm. So I don't go with that shit anymore of like, if your kids are really hungry, they'll eat what you put in front of them because that's not fucking true. It's like, they're not dogs. Like, oh. like they're not, that's what they say about dogs. Like they're not fucking dogs. And so that thing of like, you hear it too. Like, have you ever heard like, don't be a short order cook for your kids? Yeah, like, I see that a lot when I see posts. It's like, you just have your kids eat what they put in front of them. Like, you're not a short order cook. If you have to make individual meals for each of your kids, then you're just teaching them to not just accept what they're given and they're you're making them entitled and spoiled. Like, Yeah, okay. okay. Except for, I talked about this on an episode, like one of my very first episodes of the show. So let's break that fucking down for just a second. When you go out to eat somewhere with a, either your family or a group of friends, how often are you all eating the same food? When you have a meal with family or like you get to have a big get together, how often that everybody's plate looks the same? Right. Like a big cookout. Like everyone picks what they want from the, from the exactly. cookout. Yes, your house might not be a fucking restaurant and it can get expensive to have to have all these different kinds of foods. But what's the fucking alternative? You just starve? When you don't have another choice, what do you do? And like my kid is not suffering socially or, or becoming an entitled, entitled little shit just because he has to ask for an accommodation to be able to feed himself. It's an accommodation is what it is. He's asking me to please accommodate the fact that his brain will not let him eat a fucking piece of broccoli. And as his parent, who understands that this is not a choice for him, what does it say about me if I refuse that? Right. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when I didn't really understand why it was happening. But that saying, like, when you know better, you do better. Right. So why the fuck would I force my child to be so upset that he can't physically eat anything all because I refuse to give him chicken nuggets when the rest of us were eating tacos. Do you know what I mean? Like, is it worth the meltdown? Is it worth the, the trauma that's going to come from the fact that every time he has to eat a meal, he's scared that it'll be something he can't eat and then therefore create some sort of fucking food issues for him later in life that I've had to deal with my whole life? Why do I want to pass that to my kids? You don't, right. right? So you fucking do something different. So yes, I am a short order cook in my house. You're fucking right, I am. But I don't have any other choice but to be. But there's a lot of mommy shaming that goes on when you have neurodivergent household and you have to do things differently, especially around food. Like you said, you see that all over the place. It's like, don't be a short order cook for your kids. I don't have a fucking choice. And like, if you think about it, wouldn't your childhood have been so much nicer if your mom was just like, hey, uh, I made this. Does this sound good to you? And if not, if you say no, if she would have just asked you why, like why you didn't want to eat the carrots, why you didn't mm -hmm. want to eat the cooked vegetables, like wouldn't have that have been nice for her to just ask you why? And mm -hmm. you'd be able to look at her and go, because I don't like how it feels in my mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then that just be like, oh, okay, cool. I just won't make you eat it then. Well, you can eat something else. So right. I have that choice. So I, I'm making it. Yeah. And that's like not to say that my mom was like just a hard ass over it. Like I said, oh, I know she's not, she's not, she was not remember one to like, like, for, like necessarily force me to eat it. It was more like my dad, even then my dad wasn't like being cruel about it. It was just like, just eat your plate. Just eat your plate. That's, that's all I'm asking. Just eat your food. So I'm not to say like my mom was just like a hard ass. It's just, I also had this thing where I would literally sneak junk food into my room. Like she would go into my room and find cookies. She'd go to my room, find chips. And she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, this is just what I want to eat. Yeah, I did that too. And I was going to, I was going to segue into that. That kind of thinking creates 
the child who feels insecure around food. So then that creates the sneaking of food. The kid that will come out at 10 o'clock at night when they know their mom doesn't hear them because their mom's asleep and get snack cakes out the fucking cabinet like I used to do. I had a bunk bed at one point. And of course I had the top bunk because I was the oldest. And I remember my mom would buy Star Crunch and oatmeal cream pies. And I would go every single night and take two out of the box and stash them in my room for throughout the day. Like I would have a little lineup of like snack cakes on the the side of the bunk bed that met the wall. I would like stuff it in between the, the frame and the mattress so that she couldn't see it. And then I would hide the wrappers in the bottom of the bathroom garbage can, which right. just reminded me of something like, okay, want to talk about some real time trauma processing? Let's do it. To this day, I just realized this. I crave something sweet every single night before I go to bed. Yeah, I feel like my day is not complete if I don't have something chocolate. Like, yeah, like at the end my- of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like before I go to bed, I will want like a snack cake or a few little Oreos with some milk. Like I don't, I don't have to eat it in volume. It's just the the habit of eating something sweet before bed. Mm-hmm. Like that just, I just made a fucking connection to that right now after telling that story. Like that's some real time fucking childhood trauma processing <laughs> in the making. I figured out where my sweet time or sweet craving at nighttime comes from. That's from sneaking snack cakes when I was a kid, because there were nights that I was going to bed hungrier than I should have been because I refused to eat something that was on my plate. So, again, not that I was fucking starving me because they weren't. They were not. We were taken care of. We were not abused. We were not starved. It's like we just weren't accommodated. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which, unfortunately, led to issues that our parents probably didn't even realize were ever going to be an issue. And like, if you have like a kid, like Nicholas refuses to eat any sort of vegetable. I refuse to eat any sort of salad when I was a kid. Now I love salads. So yeah. just like, it's like, he just might be something he just grows into. Like, yeah. Like we talked earlier. It's like, it's not something like being a picky eater, something you grow it out of, but you can grow into liking something. Absolutely. Like, I think it's like what every seven years, your taste change. Like, yeah, something like that. Like you, your taste buds are like literally renewed every like seven years or something like that. Okay. Well, that's been a lot of like real time childhood trauma processing I wasn't planning on getting into today. <laughs> but <laughs> what are some things that we've found about ourselves and our food habits that have made life easier for us? Like once we came to the understanding, like this is not a choice, I'm not just a picky person. Like, this is an actual sensory issue. It's an actual problem that neurodivergent people deal with. What are some things that work for you in the realm of food? Um, Do you have safe foods that you keep around all the time? Favorite foods, stuff that you never get tired of? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said earlier, I know not everyone can do this, but this is just what works for me because I work across the street from a grocery store and like I work in a place that has like a fridge I will just grab a bag like I'll make a list on just a post-it note at work of what sounds good for me and what will I definitely eat for the next two or three days and then I'll just go to the store buy that stuff and then take it home it just like I said it's eliminated a lot of food waste for me it's kept like food costs down and like I can't eat a lot anyway I had stomach surgeries so I can't eat a lot. So like I said, this, I know this will definitely not work for probably for most people. It just works for me. Like what one person might eat in one day, I can will last me for three days, that sort of thing. So safe fruits me. I don't always keep them in the house. I usually just buy them when they're on sale or pierogies, which is actually something that you introduced me to. You introduced me with sauerkraut on them, which bit. <laughs> so pierogies and then <sighs> bread is safe food for me. But because it takes me a while to eat like a loaf of bread. And plus, bread is very, like, I I will literally just walk around eating bread. Like, I will just eat bread and butter was, like, one of my main staple foods as a kid. Just grab a piece of bread, put some butter, fold in half, eat it. Do and you so, remember that time your mom went to Amish town and yes. brought back that fucking loaf of bread? And mm-hmm. you, me, and Mark 
got the tub of margarine out of the fridge the and country crock, country crock tub of margarine. The country yep. crock and literally stood at the stove and took chunks of bread off of this loaf and dipped it in the fucking country crock and just ate it and your mom came in the kitchen and was like i just bought that and it's gone like we literally ate the whole loaf of bread that mm-hmm. she had plans for <laughs> like five minutes we've devoured the entire right. fucking loaf of bread because mm-hmm. yes. it, it, that is a say bread is always a fucking thing for me like i love me some bread so normally i buy like the half loaf of bread like yes i know it's more expensive to buy a half loaf than just a full loaf but it's like it's either buy a half loaf and eat the entire thing or buy a full loaf eat half the thing and throw, throw the rest away so right. so uh, i don't like i said i have bread in my house right now but i have probably haven't bought bread in like two or three months before this but i was like man you know what really sounds good uh egg and cheese sandwiches like i'll just make so i've made like egg and cheese sandwiches like five times in the past two weeks so just egg and cheese sandwiches and then yeah, you made those while you were here yeah, I made them twice while I was there. I remember taking a picture of my fridge and showing it to a coworker because my coworker thought she was like, we're just talking about our like how we buy food, whatever. And she's she was like, yeah, I didn't really need to go grocery shopping. My fridge is atrocious. I was like, I bet my fridge wins. She's like, mm-hmm. it can't possibly. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. My fridge looks like a mine is like the alcohol. My fridge looks like a poor poor, poor sorority girl's fridge, like college student, where it's just drinks and condiments couldn't tell you why i just can't keep a lot of food at once because i just can't get to it all at once like i can't get to it and also part of my what i do now is like i'm also trying to lose weight like i gained i got hurt and so i gained like 30 40 pounds in the like the span of a year and so i've just now lost that weight and i'm like that i gained and then uh just trying so i like i love mac and cheese if i could just eat mac and cheese all the time i'll keep it but then i'd also be 500 pounds if i just ate mac and cheese all the fucking time so i do have safe foods like foods that if i could keep in my house all the time i would but then i know i would eat them all the time if i would like i don't keep a lot of chips in my house because i know i could devour an entire bag of chips so i'm like okay i'll buy veggie straws still not the healthiest thing but at least healthier than chips i love veggie straws yeah it's kind of like something i have to buy in moderation while also buying some sort of variety in food plus i take like a multivitamin every day and of course it has to be the freaking gummy ones because Same. i'm a child and i can't swallow an entire adult multivitamin that's probably because another thing fucking like, horse pills and they taste awful yes, and then they, they get stuck they in your throat and then you burp them up and it makes you want to vomit it's like it's mm-hmm. disgusting i i only do gummy gummy multivitamins i have to take so many other pills and vitamins that are not multivitamins that like the only kind of vitamin capsules I will take are the ones that are like the you could pull them apart and the powder comes out. Mm-hmm. Like I cannot do pressed, big pressed the chalky ones. tablets. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. No. But like I have to supplement my diet too because though I'm very adventurous with my eating, because of my hyperfixations, I will go weeks without eating vegetables. Period. Like weeks and weeks weeks. So like I make it a point to supplement my diet with a vitamin, a multivitamin of some kind. Or like well, like um, notice how I said, yeah, like notice how I said all my safe foods have been carbs. So right. bread, mac and cheese, pierogies. So right. it's just I'm a very carb heavy eater. Well, and, so- and that's that's actually kind of makes sense because those carbs, those sugars trigger your um your happy hormones in your brain. They trigger the dopamine dopamine response. (laughs) So like you are literally dopamining when you're either searching for carbs or like crunchy things, you know, Mm -hmm. and by dopamining, I mean like mining for dopamine. Like you're looking for Mm -hmm. you're you're, it's like you're a little Minecraft character looking for your fucking dopamine. They need to put dopamine in the fucking Minecraft world. That'd be cool. That would actually be kind of hilarious to be like a little character. Hell yeah. But like I used to eat ice cream every night. There were years where I ate ice cream every night. I do not keep ice cream in my house. Like, I will occasionally buy a carton of it, but then I'll finish that carton in a week and then not buy it for a long time. Because it's like, I can't, like, the foods that I consider safe are foods that I also know will make me gain weight if I ate them too much. So I can't always keep them in my house. So that's why I buy food, like, every three days. 
Right. Because I just know that, like, if I don't, if I just keep continuously keep them in my house, I will not lose the weight that I'm trying to lose. And it'll just be a problem. Right. For me, no matter whether I'm on a kick for this stuff or not, I always have that one brand of macaroni and cheese that I was talking about, at least two boxes in the house. I always have some kind of frozen fruit. Usually blueberries and dragon fruit are my favorite. So I will have at least one bag of dragon fruit and some frozen blueberries in the freezer. Chicken nuggets of this one brand that I really like. Those are always in the house. And bagels. And again, most of that shit, carbs, right? Carbs and sweet things. That's kind of my my safe stuff and staples at the same time that are always in my house. Things that I've I've learned that have worked for me outside of having those staple things in the house is switching up how I buy my more perishable foods. So like if I know that I need to eat more vegetables, instead of buying fresh produce, I will buy frozen green beans or frozen peppers and onions for when we do taco night so I can make fajita peppers. I have to do frozen options of things. So convenience things that yes, might end up costing me a little bit more money up front, kind of like your half loaf of bread. It costs you a little bit more money up front, but the alternative is buying the fresh version and it going to waste. I found this stuff, um, it's bird's eye brand and they're frozen like red potatoes and onions and the potatoes are already cut up and seasoned. And all you have to do is cut this fucking bag open and put it on a sheet pan and put it in the oven. You don't even have to put seasonings on it if you don't want to. Like it's already seasoned. They taste great. I love a roasted potato. I love it. I love roasted red potatoes and onions. Love it. I will eat that with every fucking meal, but I can't. It's like too many fucking steps. The cooking and the steps to get to what I want to eat are too much. So my thing that works best for me is trying to find the shortcuts in being able to get the foods in my body that I know that I like and need without having it be so time consuming or removing the possibility that the thing will go to waste because it's in my freezer. That makes any sense. My brain's leaking out of my ears again. So I've been told you earlier before we started, I've been fucking deep down an astrology rabbit hole, like deep. She deep. Okay. (laughs) Like to the point to where have you ever hyper fixated on something for so long that you've lost time and end up with a pounding fucking headache? Well, like Wikipedia is like a major like I love Wikipedia and but I swear like the the little blue links and little blue air like little things to like to click on downfall because it's like let's let's read about World War Two for no reason. It's like, ah, but here's a link to, to talk about like Hitler. I'm like, okay. Hitler, it's like, ah, oh, Hitler did art. Here's like a Hitler thing about whatever art school he went to or didn't go to. And let's read about that art school. Mm-hmm. And like, up, oh, but that art school also had Monet go to it or whatever. Let's read about Monet. And it's just keep going, going down and down. So I completely understand. And then it's like, well, where am I? Who am I as a person? And I've been squirreling so bad because full disclosure, I've been unmedicated for months. It's been one of those things like I need to just call and make an appointment with my psychiatrist, but I fucking hate the guy. They upped my meds. It was too much. So I quit taking them. And then I never made an appointment to get a lower dose. And we're still Mm -hmm. here. And it's like been probably six months since I've had my ADHD meds. And I've noticed that like the squirrel brain is getting really fucking bad. But like I started down the astrology rabbit hole because I'm doing our family charts and I'm trying to compare our family charts. So I'm like working on this document where I'm breaking all of our charts down by sign and house that they're in and putting them all together so I can see like where our comparisons are. And then I pro- I told Lindsay that I would look into her chart and pull a few things to look at. And then I was like, oh, I remember I was supposed to do this for Lindsay. So then I open a new tab and I pull something up for Lindsay. Well, then I look at a placement and I'm like, okay, what's this mean? And then I go Google what that means. And then that brought me to another thing and I'll go Google what that means. Before I know it, I have 35 fucking tabs open and I have not done the original thing I set out to do, which was take my scribble notes that I made when I was comparing our charts yesterday and type them into a fucking document. Like I stopped Mm -hmm. in the middle of that fucking document I was starting and had 35 other tabs open that had nothing to do with what I originally started doing. So like 
I was down that rabbit hole so fucking hard that I've worked myself into a fucking headache. And to be honest with you, I forgot it was fucking Thursday for a minute. And I was like, shit, I have to be on the fucking call with Amanda and do a whole ass episode today with a brain that has fucking been microwaved inside my skull and is now leaking out out of my fucking ears. So if any of this episode made any kind of sense, we have won the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we we've accomplished something. We accomplished something. If someone something. leaves this with one ounce, fuck, even a half an ounce of a coherent thought, we have won the day. So <laughs> with that being said, we're going to let you go because I-, I can't anymore. So I love you all. And I love you, Aminder. I love you too. And we will see you next time. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.